What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back and welcome into the Seattle Mariners post-game recap. And we get to do something today that we have not done a lot so far this year. Talk about a Mariners win. They defeat the Toronto Blue Jays 6-1 to in 10 innings today to improve to 5-8 and eight now on the young season. And hopefully this is the game that gets this team going. They get a day off tomorrow, soak in the nice victory, get back home, and hopefully have a good homestand and now really get this season going. So I'm going to break down this game for you guys. Before I do, as always, hit that like button. It helps out tremendously. Drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the game and the season so far. And guys, I am just 40 subscribers away from 3,000. Can we get it today? It, it Not impossible. I've had a few videos this week that have really blown up and so far this season that have gotten me close to that number. So if you guys can help me out, hit that sub button. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support. And Friday night, I will be live for Cubs Mariners. Um, so come join me for that. We will have a lot of fun um, on the stream, hanging out and watching the game together. So um, thank you guys for all the support. Yeah, you know, I'm never going to call game 13 of the season must win. I mean, you know, even if they were 0-13, because at that point I'm like, does it really matter? But <laughs> Or 0-12, I should say. Is 5-8 and eight much different than 4-9 and nine in the grand scheme of things? No. But the way this game played out, the way it went, the, the way Logan Gilbert dominated, Jorge Polanco makes that amazing play in the ninth inning to get the game to extra innings. And then I'll talk a little bit about the offense in the 10th. You know, you had the offensive struggles through nine innings. It just, it felt like they needed to get one. It felt like they needed to get this win because I've really, in my head, I've kind of felt like, okay, I'm starting the season on Friday. That's when it's time to hit the ground running and let's get this team back on track. And it's not going to be easy. Cubs and Reds are tough teams coming in. So I'm not saying that as if, oh, I expect the Mariners to just win five out of six, but it's been a tough first stretch day off tomorrow get it going Friday. Would that have changed much at four and nine? No, but you know, you would have been swept in Toronto, a one in five road trip, nothing breaking your way. Even a five and one homestand wouldn't get you above 500. You get a win today. Like I said, the plane ride feels a little bit better for these guys going home. And hopefully it's just enough to start a little bit of momentum for this team going into the next homestand. And it is important. To remember it, it. We are at game 13. I mean, you know, they could have a four and two homestand, go to Colorado, sweep the Rockies seven and two. And this team is then sitting at, what would that be? 12 and 10. And did I do, did I, did I math correct there? I think I did. Um, seven. Oh, I can't. Yeah. 12 and 10. And we'll all be pretty happy. And that's still just 22 games into the season. Um, no, you know, like that's not guaranteed to happen. They could go and six on the next homestand for all I know. But I've said it before. These are just, these guys are too good to be playing this poor. This game does not fix everything. This does not eliminate the first 12 games at all. But it felt like, it felt like a Mariners win. This felt like a game we've seen this team win or the type of game they're built to win. You saw Logan Gilbert look like an ace. Yeah, the offense had some struggles and I'm not letting them off the hook, but they got going in the extra innings. And for the first time this year, they score over five runs bullpen does its job. It, it felt like a good Mariners win. It felt like a clat classic, like this team has a great winning track record, but you know what I mean? Over the last few years, it felt like the kind of game that this team just seems to pull out a little bit. Another game that, you know, it, like I said, it, it just felt more, it felt Mariners today. And, and then they get the W as well. So it was just really, really good to see. And like I said, I think hopefully this sets them up for a little bit of momentum now um, coming back in the homestand. So let's break this get dame, dame game down. Let's start with the pitching as I pull up the box score here. Um, I cannot say enough about Logan Gilbert today. Absolutely outstanding. He did not deserve a no decision. The fact that Logan Gilbert does not have a win yet this year is beyond frustrating. Now, I don't put stock into pitchers' wins and losses to evaluate them, but I want them to get wins because it feels good. It feels good to get a W, I'm sure, as a starting pitcher. I'm sure if any of you have pitched, I have not. I'm not the one to talk to about that. But just from being around people that have played, like, you want to get that W. It feels good. And Logan absolutely deserved it today. Seven and two-thirds, five hits, one run. Um, it was earned, the home run by Vlad Jr., uh, walk and eight strikeouts. His ERA sits now at 2.66 this season. A phenomenal, phenomenal performance from Logan Gilbert. And they absolutely needed it. 
We talked about last turn through the rotation, going back to the Cleveland series in Milwaukee. Castillo struggled. Kirby struggled. Gilbert was okay in Milwaukee, but had a little home run issue. Bryce was great. Emerson Hancock was not. Next time through, Luis Castillo struggled in Toronto. George Kirby struggled in Toronto. Who is going to be the guy to stop it? And it was Logan Gilbert. I'm not surprised. I honestly had a good feeling that Logan would pitch well today. Um, you know, th this rotate, what I love about the rotation is that if any time, all three of these guys, and hopefully Bryce Miller maybe is joining that group with the new splitter, but they can all be the ace at some point. Um, you know, it's not just Kirby. It's not just Castillo. That's why anybody goes, you know, who would you rather have? You had to just take one. I can never answer it because there's times it's all three. And so far in 2024, it's been Logan Gilbert. And, you know, I think he sometimes gets forgotten because he's the number three. I put that in quotes because I, I think all these guys would be ones on some staffs. I know Kirby and Castillo have struggled so far this year. It's three starts. I'm not going to, you know, worry too much about them until we get to May or something like that. And they're still struggling. But Logan Gilbert has just been fantastic this year. I mean, you know, one of the reasons, if you want to talk about, I talked about yesterday why this team is struggling and the big hitters aren't hitting and the big starting pitchers aren't pitching well, mostly kill. I always want to say combine Kirby and Gilbert and say Kilbert. I don't know why Kirby and Castillo have struggled. Logan is not. And one of the reasons this team has remained afloat in 13 games and hasn't, you know, they're not sitting at two and 11 is, you know, guys like Kenzone, Kenzone, Rojas. Um, I'm probably Dylan Moore has swung the bat really well. And Logan Gilbert is another reason why, uh, you know, it's a shame that he couldn't get the W the home run to Vlad. I mean, you know, Vlad, Vlad's got power. He's a good hitter. He crushed that thing. I think that 115 exit velo, you know, Logan seems to have a little, like one's a start where he, one home run, a start that he's going to give up. Um, but it was a solo home run, right? That's what they always, you always say like, Hey, if you can get the long ball, make sure it's a solo home run, you know, not Logan's fault. The offense wasn't doing anything through the first nine innings of this game. But that's a start that Logan Gilbert uh, should have a win for. And he is off to a Cy Young level start. I know um, I think Colton the Mariners mojo had Logan as his Cy Young winner. And I, I don't think that's crazy at all. I absolutely, I, I, I've said before, I think all three guys are capable of having a Cy Young season. Now, so far, not the case for Castillo and Kirby, uh, but Logan is off to that type of start. So listen, when your backs are against the wall, you know, you can win a game 13-12. 11 10 right like your offense can bail you out but for me it's that pitcher it's the starting pitcher the next day can he be the guy to say enough is enough with the losing i'm taking this over and i'm winning this game that was logan gilbert today i know he didn't get the w but my gosh did he do his part to do it a fantastic start um against the lineup that has been pesky to the mariners i know it hadn't been great coming into this series but it's given the mariners fits over the last two games andres munoz um comes in he faces Vlad in the eighth inning, gets out of it, then pitches the ninth inning. Yes, I think it was the right call by Scott Service. Um, you know, especially after Vlad had taken Logan deep in his previous at bat. I get that Logan was only at 89 pitches. Had he kept Logan in, I probably wouldn't have complained much either. I get maybe trying to get him that final out. But knowing what Vlad did to him the last at bat, and, and I'll be honest, I don't know the history. Maybe Vlad has hit Logan hard his entire career. I get, maybe he doesn't. I, I don't know. I don't have that number in front of me. Just something that kind of popped into my head right now thinking of it. Um, so I have no problem there going to the bullpen in that spot. If you're concerned about the Gilbert Guerrero matchup, which in the previous at bat, you had a right to be. If, you know, if um, uh, uh, Vlad Jr. gets him again, if Guerrero gets him again, you know, game's over. And Scott went to his best reliever. We, we can argue right now because I still... Munoz still doesn't look quite right to me a hundred percent to be perfectly honest with you guys. He's been fine. His stuff is so good, you know, and, and electric that I think he's going to wiggle around and out of jams, even when he's not perfect. But again, without Brash and Santos in the pen, you've still got to think that Andres Munoz is your best weapon. You know, Stanek's been good. Spire's been good too, but that was a crucial situation. You had runners at first and second with two outs with one of the Jays' best hitters coming to the plate, and Scott went to his best reliever, at least who should be his best reliever. I'm not going to be mad about that. I'm just, I'm not. And, and then you've got the heart of the order coming up behind him for the ninth inning with, you had Guerrero, then you had Bo Bichette, Justin Turner, um, Biggio, um, Vogelbach, pinched hit. 
So you had the meaty part of the lineup coming up. That is when you should use your best relievers. And people, well, what do you do in the extra innings? Well, they you do what you did. The team put up the runs, and then you can go to a secondary reliever, a Ryan Stanek, an Austin Voth, a Tyson Miller, whoever you want to bring in with a five-run lead. That's why you do it. That's why you bring Munoz into that spot and don't save him for later. If you go to somebody else there, it gives up the runs, and there's there is no later. The game's over. Now, again, Munoz still not not super like he doesn't we're still not getting 2022 Munoz maybe I'm wrong on that maybe I'm missing something he still looks a little shaky I mean an inning in a third one hit one walk no runs he did his job and truthfully had that little pop-up falling in in the ninth inning it would have been a little unlucky but still the control command doesn't look great want to see some strikeouts there but again, you know, got through it got the job done I don't want to overanalyze the win too much because this team just needed a win and what did I say last night? I do not care how they get it, how they get the W, and they got it. Speaking of getting the Ws, Munoz does get the win. Uh, that play Jorge Polanco made in the ninth inning. Um, Base was loaded after the Vogelbach walk, um, which may have been a little unintentional, intentional walk. And I think it was, who was the batter for the Jays? It was... Um, Ernie Clement, I believe was the hitter. So that, you know, that too, with the walk, it may have been a little bit of an unintentional, intentional walk to go with Clement versus Vogelback. I'm always weary, weary of that because, you know, you load the bases and one wild pitch game's over a walk. It's over. So I don't know, maybe that wasn't the case, but I'm wondering if it was to get to Ernie Clement looked like that little blooper was going to drop in, but Jorge Polanco makes the catch. And if this season goes the way we hope, and this team can push towards the playoffs and a division title. I'd come back to that play. That's a play I would come back to. That drops in, Mariners lose 4-9. Who knows? Maybe the spiral begins. Maybe it has no impact on the season. I don't know. Maybe they're just not very good, and they lose 88 games, and we who cares? But if this team turns it around, I'm not saying like, oh, that Polanco catch saved the season. Like, we're 13 games in. There, you don't need to save a season yet. But if this team does get in, there's always like four or five moments you look back on and go, that's one to keep in keep in the back of your mind. And that's one that I would keep in the back of your mind was that Polanco play. If this team starts getting on a roll, like I think they will. Um, great play by Polanco to make the catch. And he's a guy that struggled a little bit at defense so far this year. Um, so that was really good to see. Then in the 10th inning, Mr. Blue Jay killer Cal Raleigh gets the two-run home run. Ty France adds a double. Um, I think Mitch Hanniger out of the base hit in there. The Mariners busted open and win this game six to one. Ryan Stanek closes it out. Kind of felt like when Polanco made that catch that something was going to happen. This team just felt due to get something going. And they got the runs off of, um, I believe it was Tim Meza, who I, I feel like the Mariners always hit him. It's Meza, right? Not Meza, I, I think. I, I swear every time he's in, he was the guy that came in in the playoff game that Santana hit the home run off of when Gosman came out of the game. So, um, yeah, I don't know the numbers career-wise, but it seems like every time Mays is in, the Mariners seem to have some kind of success against him. They get the big five-run inning, and they cruise to a victory. Let's look at the offense. JP, one for four. He had the RBI single in the third inning, which gave the Mariners the one nothing lead, which I'm going to be honest, the way Logan was pitching, I thought that might be enough. I It looked like it. Logan was just cruising through the first six innings of this game. So... It looked like it might be enough. That's not Logan's fault at all. It wasn't enough. You need to put on more runs. You know, again, JP, a, a hit, a walk, on base a couple times. Still hasn't got going yet, but better, better. Uh, Julio won for five. Golden Sombrero for Julio struck out four times. Listen, I said it yesterday. Like, we can sit here and debate every little thing. We can get on Scott, you know, and, and I, I'm not one to really – Blame Scott for the struggles so far this year. I, I'm, I'm more the players got to perform, but whatever. If, if you don't like Scott, fine. I'm not here to start the debate on it. That's fine. But, you know, Julio's got to be better, you know, and they got the win today. That's great. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time criticizing it, but Julio's got to get it going. We're only 13 in, not worried. Thought he missed some pitches that he could have done some damage with. Um, you know, we know Julio can be streaky, so don't be shocked. We get in this homestand. Julio gets rolling a little bit. He's still a, you know, a four for four away from that OPS probably being in the seven hundreds. So I'm not worried yet, but, uh, yeah, it would be nice to get, to get Julio hot. Cause that's really, you know, you can win games here and there, but you know, thanks to Logan and some other, you know, guys getting hot. But if the top of the order, if JP 
Julio, Garver, Cal, Polanco aren't hitting well. If George Kirby, Luis Castillo, Logan Gilbert aren't pitching well, the guy's not going to win many games. It, to me, it's as simple as that. That's why they haven't. Now, you can kind of keep Logan out of that a little bit. Logan's been great. But the rest of them, yeah, that's why they were 4-8 and eight entering today. Uh, Ty France was 1-5 for five with that double. Um, you know, Ty's been moved up in the order a little bit here. I, I Listen, I like having Ty at the bottom of the order more just because I think this lineup's a little deeper. I have no problem trying to move guys around to spark something, though, either. I am not a big lineup order person. I just don't think it matters in the grand scheme of things really all that much. Now, listen, you know, I don't want Sebi Zavala batting third, Julio batting ninth, and Cal leading off and something like that. But for the most part, I, I just, like, you know, we debate it because we're Mariners fans. We watch every Mariners game. But does anybody go and go, like, do we go back and look at the Braves? Or who, who else missed the playoffs by a game last year? You know, the Cubs? I don't know. I think they did. Are we going back going, boy, if the Cubs just would have moved their lineup around, they would have gotten in. No, I don't think it matters all that much in the grand scheme of things. I think the hitters got a hit. Now, maybe there's spots in the lineup where guys hit better. I tend to think that's just more kind of randomness than it is actually them being in a certain spot and playing better. I think you'd probably look, be looking at a small sample size of at bats, no matter what, for a lot of these guys. Um, and, and I don't know. I just, and, and you know, listen, some of the play baseball can tell me maybe that you you do know. I know a lot of guys that play baseball and they tell me there is a difference. So listen, this isn't me coming on lecturing anything. I just, t- to me, it's like, they got to hit regardless of where they are in the order. I don't really care if you're, if your offense is good, the batting order really won't matter all that much. They will produce if they're bad, they're bad. Like you're not going to, you're not going to fix the A's offense by moving that lineup around too much. Th- that's kind of my point, I think. So if they're good, they'll hit. If they're not, they won't. <laughs> uh, Mitch Hanniger, two for, or excuse me, one for four with two RBIs. And a walk, Mitch on base twice. Uh, Polanco was 0 for 5, another guy that's got to get going. Uh, Mitch Garver was 1 for 4, another guy that's still got to get going. Uh, Luke Rayleigh, pinch Rayleigh. <laughs> Luke Rayleigh is just in the doghouse from that spring training, which... I mean, Dom Canzone's putting together some really good at bats. So I'm not like mad that they're playing Canzone and Rayleigh doesn't have any options, but like, and he's probably not going to play much the next few days because I think you're facing two more lefties coming up here from Chicago. And, you know, Rayleigh's actually hit lefties okay, at least average wise. The power's more against righties, but I don't know. Like, I, I, I want to see Luke Rayleigh get some at bats. I mean, the guy's had what, 12, 13 at bats this year? If that, honestly, I thought he was a nice addition this off season. And I get, it's kind of like Mitch Hanniger's hitting really well. Canzone's done a nice job. So there's not a spot really for Luke Rayleigh, right? And Ty France, the other guy that Rayleigh would replace is hitting well too. And you're not going to, you know, bench Julio. So, you know, I get that there's not really a lot of at bats for Luke Rayleigh, but I, I would like to see them mix him in a little bit. Heck, if you're facing a righty, give Mitch Garver the day off and let Rayleigh DH or have Ken's own DH. Rayleigh's the better defender and have Rayleigh in the outfield, something like that. But, uh, you know, it's been kind of tough for him. And I know he had the rough spring, but you know, like spring training at the end of the day is 30 at bats. And who knows? We can't base anything off spring. So I'd like to see Luke Rayleigh get some more playing time. I get why he hasn't, but I like to see more. The big dumper, one for three with the two run home run and a walk as well. Up to a 617 OPS. I know OPS isn't the end all be all, but it's just, it's right here. I'm looking at it. So we're using it right now. Dumper's starting to get hot. Had a nice series in Toronto where he always seems to rake. He had a nice little dig at Jay's manager, John Schneider, not Seahawks, John Schneider. Um, if you remember, Schneider made a point, I think after the playoff game or something a year ago, I don't remember if it was after the playoff series or if it was, I think it was, I think it was after game one um, that, you know, he's not a tough guy to pitch to talking about Cal Raleigh, the dumper when you execute pitches and uh, yeah, Cal kind of just um, said that, uh, you know what, what did Cal say? Cal said, I guess they didn't execute their pitches or something like that. I just know he had a good little quip. I guess I was reading, I guess John Schneider's not a very, or I think Cal said that like Schneider's not very well liked, I guess by some, or that's kind of how he is. So I, I don't know that. I don't really care. I'm not worried too much about the blue Jays in terms of their manager or anything like that. But um yeah, just interesting and good for Cal. Always like when he gets those gets the hits against the Blue Jays. Dylan Moore 0 for three scored run and walked. Demo's been off to a good start this year. Uh, Luis Urias was 0 for two. Canzo was 0 for one with a walk. He pinched hit for Urias. 
Um, and then Dylan Moore went to third base and Canzone stayed in left field. So good to see Canzone get some walks last few games. He's been able to uh, get on base. Another nice thing, a couple of people I saw on Twitter mentioned, uh, especially Jake from You Love to See It, which you guys should go subscribe to his channel. Um, you know, he mentioned it's also a big win because you lose and you're three back of the Jays in a tiebreaker in the wild card. So that is a great point. You know, now you're one and two against them. You're still behind them, but you're a series win from getting that even. And then maybe, you know, getting that tiebreaker um, away from them is the Jays are a team that, and listen, I hope the Mariners win the division, but the Jays are very possibly a team. The Mariners will be in competition with for a wild card. Um, you know, if it comes to that. So that's another reason that this was a uh, really big win. So nice win. Feels good to talk about a win. Logan Gilbert was sensational. Deserved a W. Cal Raleigh was great today. Um, who else had a big game? You know, Mitch Hanniger had a nice day. Ty France. Munoz, again, still, I, I still don't think he's been super sharp, but he got the job done. I thought Scott made the right call to go to him. Stanek finishes out. Mariners get a win. Let's get this thing going now. Let's go for Friday. Um, I will have the series preview for the Cubs up tomorrow. I will be live on Friday for the Mariners and the Cubs. That's for everybody. Saturday will be a members only stream. So think about becoming a channel member. There will be a contest giveaway for that stream. Um, hopefully a new era hat or something equivalent to that. So think about becoming a channel member. Remember to like the video. If you're new, hit subscribe 40 subs away from 3000. Let's see if we can get it tonight. I would love to wake up and see 3000. You guys are the best. And if you're going to T-Mobile this week, download the SeatGeek app or go to their website. Use promo code JS Trident for $20 off your next purchase. Doesn't have to be the Mariners. Can be any team, can be concerts, other things as well. SeatGeek will tell you if it's a good deal or bad deal. Green is good. Red is bad. Have a great night, everybody. Mariners get the W. They improve to five and eight. Does it excuse the first 12 games? No, but you got to start somewhere. And maybe they started it. Maybe they started the turnaround today. Have a great night, everybody, and go Mariners. Peace.